Marita Bonner. Oh, it's not a poem. Marita Bonner, she... I'm going to be reading an essay of hers about her grievances when her parents died and her experiences with difficulty living in a society that was white privilege. And it's called Being Young, a Woman, and Colored. You start out after you have gone from kindergarten to sheepskin, covered with sun-dry Latin freezes. At least you know what you want life to give you. A career as fixed and as calmly brilliant as the North Star. The one real thing that money buys. Time. Time to do things. A house that can be as delicate delectably out of order and as easily put in order as the dollhouse of plain house days and of course a husband who you can look up to without looking down on yourself somehow you feel like a kitten in a sunny catnip field that sees sleek plump brown field mice and yellow baby chicks sitting coyly side by side under each leaf a desire to dash three or four ways sees you seizes you that's youth but you know that things learned need testing acid testing to see if they are really after all an interwoven part of you all your life you have heard of the debt you owe your people because you have managed to have the things they not largely have. So you find a spot where there are hordes of them, of course, below the line to be your catnip field while you close your eyes to mice and chickens alike. If you have never lived among your own, you feel prodigal. Some warm, untouched current flows through them, through you and drags you out into the deep waters of a new sea of human foibles and mannerisms, of a peculiar, peculiar, peculiar psychology and prejudices. And one day you find yourself entangled, enmeshed, pinioned in the sea weed of a black ghetto. Not a ghetto, Place it like the stress that flows outwardly unperturbed and calm in a stream of religious belief, but a peculiar group cut off, flung together, shoved aside in a bundle because of collar and with no more in common. Unless collar is, after all, the real bond, milling around like live fish in a basket. Those at the bottom crushed into a sort of stupid apathy by the weight of those on top. Those on top leaping, leaping, leaping to the scale, the sides to get out. There are two colored movies, innumerable parties, and cards. Cards played so intensely that it fascinates and repulses at once. Movies. Movies worthy and worthless but not even a low caste spoken stage. Parties, plentiful, music and dancing, and much that is with and color and gaiety. But they are like the richest chocolate, stuffed costly chocolates that make the taste go stale if you have too many of them. That make, excuse me, that make plain whole bread taste like ashes. There are all the earmarks of a group within a group, cut off all around from ingress from or egress to other groups. A sameness of type, the smug self-satisfaction of an inner measurement, a measurement by standards known within a limited group and not those of an unlimited, seen world like the blind, blind mice, mice whose eyes have been blinded, Strange longing seizes hold of you. You wish yourself back where you can lay your dollar down and sit in a dollar seat to hear voices, strings, reeds that have lifted the world out, 
up beyond things that have bodies and walls, where you can marvel at new, marbles and bronzes and flat colors that will make men forget that things exist in a flesh more often than things more often than in spirit where you can sink your body in a cushioned seat and sink your soul at the same time into a section of life set before you on the boards for a few hours you hear that up at new york this is to be seen that to be heard you decide the next train will take you there you decide the next second that that train will not take you nor the next nor the next for some time to come for you know that being a woman you cannot twice a month or twice a year for that matter break away to see or hear anything in a city that is supposed to see and hear too much that's being a woman a woman of any color you decide that something is wrong with a world that stifles and chokes that cuts off and stunts hedging in pressing down on eyes ears and throat somehow all wrong you wonder how it happens there that say 500 miles from the base state anglo-saxon intelligence is so warped and stunted how judgment and discernment are bred out of the race and what has become a discrimination discrimination of the right sort discrimination that the best minds have you told have told you weighs shadows and nuances and spiritual differences before it catalogs the kind they have taught you all of your life was best that looks clearly past generalization and past experiences to dissect to dig down to the real heart of matters that cast aside rapid summary conclusions drawn from primary interference as Daniel did the spiced meats. Why can't they then perceive that there is a difference in the glance from a pair of eyes that look mildly docile at white ladies and those that impersonally and per per perceptively aware of distinctions see only women who happen to be white. Why do they see a colored woman only as a gross collection of desires, all uncontrolled, reaching out for their Apollos and the Quasimodos with avid indiscrimination? Why, unless you talk in staccato squawks, brittle as seashells, unless you chomp gum, unless you cover two yards square when you laugh, unless your taste runs to violent colors, impossible perfumes, and more impossible clothes, are you a feminine Caliban craving to pass for Ariel? An attempt, an empty imitation of an empty invitation, a Mimi, a sham, a copycat, a hollow re-echo, a froth, a foam, a fleck of the ashes of superficiality. Everything you touch or taste now is like the flesh of an unripe persimmon. Do you need to be told what that is, Bean? Old ideas, old fundamentals, seen worm-eaten, outgrown, worthless, bitter, fit for the scrap, heap of wisdom. What you had thought tangible and practical has turned out to be a collection of blue flower theories. If they have not discovered how to use their accumulation of facts, they are use less to you in their world. Every part of you becomes bitter. But in heaven's name. Do not grow bitter. Be bigger than they are. Exhort white friends who have never had to draw breath in a gym in a Jim Crow train, who had never had pretty petty putrid insult dragged over them, drawing blood. I iked pebbled sand on your body where the skin is tenderest, on your body where the skin is thinnest and tenderest. 
you going to explode and hurt everything white, friendly, unfriendly, but you know that you cannot live with a chip on your shoulder, even if you can manage a smile around your eyes. Without getting steely and brittle and losing the softness that makes you a woman, for chips make you bend your body to balance them, and once you bend, you lose your poise, your balance, and the chips get into you. The real you, you get hard, and many things in you can ossify. And you know, being a woman, you have to go about it gently and quietly, to find out and to discover just what is wrong, just what can be done. You see clearly that they have acquired that they have acquired things, money, money, money to build with, money to destroy, money to swim in, money to drown in, money and ascendancy of wisdom, an incalculable hoard of wisdom in all fields and all things collected from all quarters of humanity, a stupendous mass of things, things so to the Greeks things and the Romans, and you wonder and wonder why they have not discovered how to handle deftly and skillfully wisdom stored up for them. Like the honey for the gods on Olympus, since time unknown, you wonder and you wonder until you wander out into infinity, where if it is to be found anywhere, truth really exists. The Greeks had possessions, culture. They were lost because they did not understand the Romans owned more than anyone else trampled under the heel of vandals and civilization because they would not understand Greeks, did not understand. Roman, Romans would not understand. They will not understand. So you find they have shut wisdom up and have forgotten to find the key that will let her out. They have trapped, trampled, lashed her themselves. With those and thongs and theories, they ransacked sea and earth and air to bring every treasure to her. But she sulks and will not work for a world with a whitish heel because it has snubbed her twin sister, understanding. You see clearly, off there is infinity, understanding, standing alone, waiting for someone who to really want her. But she is so far out there is no way to snatch at her and drag her in. So, being a woman... You can wait, you must sit quietly without a chip, not sodden and weighed as if your feet were cast in the iron of your soul, not wasting strength in enervating gestures as if 200 years of bonds and whips had really tricked you into nervously nervous uncertainty, but quiet, quiet like Buddha who brown like I am, sat entirely at ease entirely sure of himself, motionless and knowing a thousand years before the white man knew there was so very much difference between feet and hands. Motionless on the outside, but inside, silent still, perhaps Buddha is a woman. So you too, still, quiet with a smile, ever so slight, at the eyes, so that life will flow into and not by you, and you can gather as it passes the essences the overtones, the tints, the shadows, draw understanding to yourself, and then you can, when time is ripe, swoop to your feet in your full height, at a single gesture, ready to go where, why, whenever God motions. So, Marita Bonner's essay on being young a woman in color her message in the essay is that she she reflects on what it's like to be a woman of color in a world drowning in white privilege she remembers when her life was easy and simple when she was a kid and no worries no responsibilities just enjoying life now that she is now that she gets older she is figuring out and realizing she must work twice as hard to live a life better than the peers around her. Essentially, she is a woman living with the roles roles that women of all races have been constrained to. Over the last couple of decades, critics and essay analysis have been in an argument about whether her work focuses on double consciousness or or her essay focuses on gender class and economic difficulty. 
Bonner mentions the, def the frustration that society does not care about the value of women. From her point of view, women were not appreciated for their value in society, especially women of color. Marina also talks about being patient with, with time. Women can lead society to change, but that comes with patience. A quote in her work is, So being a woman, you must sit... So being a woman, you must sit... You must sit. So she is saying that that she understands the frustration, frustration, but woman must wait until the right moment as time passes to get up and make their move. Oh, excuse me. But woman, yes. Yeah, so she's saying that woman must be patient and wait for the right time, even though they are frustrated and it can be hard. Just be patient. Wait for the right moment to take over and lead society to changes. Marita mentions the adversity of being a woman of color and the standards that were set by society. Marita mentions that women of color had to have a stable career, a good, hus a good husband to help you improve, and that time is a valuable thing that money buys. A debt owed to your folk if you have what they do not have. Africans were most, she mentions in the essay that most Africans were pushed together because of their color, even though they may not have any form of any bonds or relationships or anything in common. And as a woman, they were not allowed to go, they were not allowed to go out to the city to hear or see or learn new things. Uh, white women were intolerable, but they were forced as an African-American woman, she says they were intolerable, but they were forced to get along with them. And eventually with time, through all this, through all this adversity, eventually with time, Marita states that time will find the courage, time will give women the courage to stand up and lead the changes when the time is right. So although white women are the assets and luxuries to society, you as a woman of color cannot be upset. Wait your time, and with time, you will be given the opportunity to stand up for what is right. So does Marita use stock characters? No, Marita does not. She does not use any stock characters in her essay. She, she, really, she kind of keeps it straightforward to what she's saying about being... A woman living in a white privileged society and that it's society's unfair and that she had to work twice as hard to get the things that some of her peers had just to keep up so she she doesn't really she doesn't use any fictional characters to talk about any hardships or anything like that she keeps it straightforward so figurative figurative language in her essay, um, Marita does use figurative language right out the gates. Uh, she talks about feeling like a baby kitten in a field on a bright sunny day that is chasing mice and baby chicks. She says that is what childhood is. So you are the baby kitten. You're chasing mice, running around, having a good time with no worries in the sunlight in a field. No responsibilities, just living and having fun. And Marita says that unless color is the real bond, so she's saying that, that that is like childhood without saying that's like childhood. So she's comparing childhood to a baby kitten running in a field of grass or whatever, chasing baby chicks and mice, playing what baby kittens do or what little kids do. They just have fun, no worries. And then... She also mentions another thing about Marita says that unless color is the real bond, after all, like fish in a basket, flopping around, crushing the ones below from the weight, trying to climb the sides to get out. She says that as Africans, they were pushed together like sardines because of color, not because of what they had or didn't have in common. So just because they were the same color, they were pushed, pushed together. And another example is that she says about being caught in the current of the sea and taken out into the deep waters.
deep waters of human foibles and mannerisms. So, if you, if she, um, she says that, talks about getting caught and taken out to the sea into society and just having to deal with it, not being able to escape it, just thrown out into the sea and exposed to um, inequality and racism and racism, sexism, all that. Excuse me. And then any other elements? Uh, she uses a few literary devices um, in her African American literature. Uh, she uses figure of language. Well, I talked about that earlier, but she uses the figure of language to show to show conflict among African people and the white privileged society. So another. She talks about being African woman, the white privileged society. So she uses a simile to say, she uses a simile that society is like the richest chocolate and if too sweet, it can make the taste go stale. So if society, if society was too nice and generous, she would be disgusted knowing that society was only being nice because they were being forced, not because they truly mean it. <laughs> And then that is a wrap for the video.